Hi everybody, I'm Joey. I thought I'd put together a video uh, which I wish was around when I first started dealing with um, these kind of kitchen hinges or um, cup hinges sometimes they're called. And you know, even after using them a lot, quite extensively, they could still be confusing sometimes. And I thought I'd run through some of the basics of how you make them work. So I think to be able to use these hinges well, you, you need to understand why they were made in the first place, what, what the original purpose was, and then you can get an idea of how you can um, adapt that use. So they're obviously made for, originally made for kitchen cabinetry, and so this part here would represent the carcass of, the, of your cabinet, and I'd say just about all of these hinges were designed for 16 or 18 mil um, MDF originally. Um, and so those original measurements pretty much haven't changed. So there are three main types of hinges that people would use generally. Um, and they're usually either called full cover, half cover or inset or the other name for inset hinges is a crank hinge and what that means is if this is the side of your carcass this is the front of your kitchen the door is either going to cover the carcass fully as in the way this hinge is set up or the hinge should be designed to cover the carcass half, so about 9 or 8 mil cover, or inset means that the door is going to sit inside the carcass and you see the edge of the carcass. So once you understand that, from there it's much easier to just to order the hinges if you understand that principle alone. Okay, so there are two main two parts to the way they make hinges. So you've got your mount and the actual hinge. Now, de depending on the company who's making the hinges, they have their own mm, subtleties about which how they like to do it. Um, so I really like Blum and the way they do the hinges and I've found them to be the strongest and um, easiest to use, um, but I still have used many other kinds and I'm familiar with different other brands, um, but this would be a kind of a general overview of, of what you're looking to do here. So what Blum do certainly is they make, for most of their hinges, they just make this one part and then they have in a different mounting plates to um, allow for the half cover. So this kind of mounting plate is called a zero, zero millimeter uh, protrusion which means when I click on my hinge and I fully adjust it fully adjust my hinge to cover the maximum amount I'm left with a 2mm uh, gap here so that's using a zero, the zero millimeter mount. Now if I want a half cover, what they do is they have a nine millimeter mount, which just raises the hinge away from your carcass nine millimeters, which means you'll only cover half of your half of the carcass, uh, and that allows you to have a door on both sides and just have one partition in your carcass whereas if you have um, full cover that means you have to have essentially two two carcasses and a hinge a full cover hinge to cover both of those carcasses and that's how all the flat pack kitchens are done these days because it's just easier uh, for people to assemble themselves usually the full inset or crank hinge is a different shape. I don't actually have one with me, um, but 
this part of the hinge here has quite a bit kink in it. It's not not straight like this. Um, they're pretty much the same to put on, but uh, you can use these full cover hinges if you want. Um, so what you'd need to do is instead of putting a 9mm mount on, if this was the side of your carcass laying down, you'd need to put an 18mm packer on and then you could put your zero mount hinge on there and instead of having your setback this, this measurement, which we'll get to soon, instead of having that at its regular setback, you just come back uh, the, the thickness of your door extra, so in this case 18 mil. And that way, click this up to here. That way the door is still inset um, from your carcass. Still, still works just the same. It's just that you have an extra packer there to hold it out. And that's just a bit of a hack that um, some guys use because it just means you, you can get away with ordering one kind of hinge and not be too confused about everything. Um, now this is a really simple jig. It looks a bit complicated but um, you could easily make one out of some MDF or plywood. Um, I think I was given this free with a, a big order that I got once but um, they are easy enough to make and I've made them before myself so so there's two different measurements you've got you need to know uh, where you want to put on the carcass where do you want to put your mount and on the door you need to know where you're going to put drill the, um, the 35 millimeter hole for that, for that hinge so first with, with uh, Blum at least you need to come 37 mil uh, back from the edge of your carcass and so with this jig I've got uh, my center marks for for the uh, where my holes here need to be drilled and again you know you just need to read the specs what your hinge says it needs to be and kind of make your jig to suit So that's, that's where that goes. Now these kind of mounts that I'm using take a 5mm hole because they have these little plastic grommets. So I'll put them in. Usually these plastic things are attached to the uh, hinge. And it's just when you take them out they uh, have to come apart. Now the, the actual steel base plate will go one way, um, this way, this way. This one has an arrow pointing to the front of the carcass, so I know pretty easily the way it goes. And then screw that in, and that is that part. Now as far as adjustment goes, with this particular mount, it has this extra screw which is a cam adjustment so you have to assume that this um, is the vertical side of your carcass and by moving this cam you're actually moving essentially the door up and down by about what, you've probably got three millimeters of travel which is a good amount um, so that is really a handy movement most other kinds of uh, brands uh, even like the 9mm mount by Blum, uh, they just have a slotted groove and so you have to loosen the uh, you have to loosen the screws and shift the hinge manually which is just as good uh, works just as, just fine. Uh, these hinges say that you need to come back 20 millimeters from the edge so that's on my jig, I've got a 20 millimeter 20 mils, that's the center of my 35 mil hole. Now for the sake of speed, I'm not going to put this in the drill press. I'll just do it with my drill, which is uh, not entirely the best way to do it. So 
So that just needs to go in there. Now you need to square this up and how you do that um, is up to you. You can do it by measure. Uh, the jig I have, this is what the, this, this part on this jig is. It, it, this part fits into the hole and then by sliding the wedge it squares up the my two uh, screw hole jigs. In there. Alright, so here's a door which I'm just working on at the moment. I've actually just hung it, but I can show you the process. So the first thing you need to do is make a story stick, a story rod, the same length as your doors. And in this case with the kitchen I'm working on, all the doors, all the all these size doors are the same. So um, make a story rod and I've drawn from each side equally an equal amount so I think in this case it's 100 mil or something like that um, which means that if I turn the story stick around it doesn't matter um, you know, everything's gonna still line up so that's the first thing and so what you do then flush up your story stick to your door I can strike what will be the center line for my hinges there and there which is easy and I can use my jig drill my holes so in this case I've used 9mm mounts because I'm, uh, I want to cover half of my carcass because on this side is drawers and the drawer will cover the other half of the carcass um, but anyway we're talking about the hinges so then I want to flush up I'm, I'm flushing with the bottom of my carcass for my doors which leaves me about a 2 or 3mm gap at the top so the bench top will come through over the top of the door, which is exactly what I want. Then I can strike the same line on my carcass side, and then use my jig to set uh, where my uh, mounting plates work. And that is foolproof way of um, putting a hit, putting the doors on and, and and getting everything to line up just how you want. Right, so when it comes to adjusting these hinges, uh, in my experience, they're all pretty much the same. This front screw is going to adjust the door or the hinge moving laterally across the face of your carcass. And so you can see it moving there. So what that's going to do is let you adjust the gap between your two doors. And the back screw moves the hinge forward and back and what that generally does is allow uh, you to for the door to stay shut sometimes with large doors um, they want to the top might want to stay open um, so what you can do is bring the top out or in this case maybe the top in and the bottom out um, and it just lets you just get everything just sitting so, so this door lines up with the other one really nicely. Um, and maybe that this door is not at fault, but the other one might have a slight twist in it, in which case you just need to match how the other door is sitting. And so that just lets you do that. And I showed you already the vertical adjustment, which is um, on, on the mounting plate for shifting the doors up and down. So that's really uh, a quick overview of pretty much the, the general hinges, hinges that you're ever going to need to use on um, furniture, I would think. Uh, but you, to really get a good idea, you need to have a look at the catalogue of, of the individual manufacturers or anyone that's close to you um, and see what they offer. And then once you know what they offer, it really changes the way you think about how to make different pieces of furniture if you know what hardware is available. Um, I will say briefly on price that certainly here in New Zealand at your general hardware stores, um, Mitre 10 and Placemakers and Bunnings, they really are charging 
a crap of a lot of money for these hinges. You're looking something like fifteen to twenty dollars for a pair of just standard full cover hinges. Um, where if you go direct to the suppliers um, who deal with uh, tradesmen all the time, um, I can buy a single hinge and a mount for about four dollars fifty or something, something like that. Um, so you're saving a lot of money by going straight to the source and so I'd highly recommend that and, and they're usually really accommodating and they'll give you a, a brochure that's where you get the information you really need and you can talk to the people who are working in the warehouse about what you're doing um, and they're way more informative than uh, someone working in a hardware store. Anyway that's just my opinion and um, thanks for watching.